This webinar is being recorded. This meeting is being recorded. Today is February 14. This is the meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee beginning at 11.38 a.m. We have three members present. Elise Link, you want to announce, say you're here? Here. Marty Smith. Here. And Myra Ross. And we are awaiting Sarah and Darren. And I know that um, Tori Dixon will not be able to be joining us today. Okay, so do we have um, do we have any announcements? No. Okay. Um, Marty, you do you want to? I don't think it's on the agenda. Do you want to tell us about your planned meeting on Thursday? Yes. So I'm meeting at nine o'clock with Guilford and Christine to talk about the North um, Common Project and the issues of putting another accessible parking space on the east side of the North Common. Um, and I'll also be speaking to them about accessibility at Town Hall. Um, I spent part of Sunday afternoon with my um, electronic level and hmm. there is no way to enter town hall in a wheelchair. Uh, the grades run anywhere from zero to the worst was 11.9%. Maximum ramp with handrails, 8%. And um, it's, they're going to have to redo, they need to redo it anyway, because the concrete's breaking up. Um, but that town hall entrance has got to be done. Um, and I noticed that the town put out a request for um, construction prices for replacing the, or resetting the uh, front stairs to town hall. And if they go ahead and do that, they're going to have to um, request a variance from the architectural access board, which will come through us, but- Which we should deny? Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I want, I, what I found is that the town never files variances. Um, when they built town hall, there should be a whole pile of variances when they did the renovation. Hmm. And there were no, according to Maureen, there are no variances on file for town hall. And that should have been done. And I don't know, I'll find out if they, if they actually know that they need to file a variance. Because the number one thing, if you do any construction, you have to have an accessible entrance and an accessible restroom. And right now we don't have an accessible entrance. I so, think they oh. thought that they did have one. I think I they think they do, but that's right. The problem is the slope. Sidewalk, not the There's, entrance. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is actually. It's the whole. Because an entrance is more than just a door. Yeah. Okay. It's the path from the public way. So it includes either from a drop off or from a parking space. And we don't have any of that. Can you envision what they would have to do? Like when you said um, it, it's too high even to have a ramp with handrails. Yeah. Um, it's just a small portion that is that high, but still most of it's well over 5%. And there's not a flat landing at the door, which there no. should be. Right. It's 3.9% uh, at, the, at the door itself. 
So I think what they're going to have to do is tear that whole area up, regrade it, regrade part of the street on that side. I think they can do it. And they're going to have to put in more drainage. I know why they why they have a slope of 3.9% at the door. It's because if you didn't, we'd have water coming into the building. Right. But that has to be solved with um, better drainage. They need more underground drainage. Hmm. Um, I think the, the grates are too small. They don't uh, take enough water. So do you have any sense of the cost that this might be? It oh, it could be half a million dollars or more. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty massive. But they're looking at spending 200000 to re reset those stairs. Yeah. So, it's but I think this needs to be addressed. This is the most important building in town. Yep. But it's interesting they didn't even think to request funds for that but they did to set the front steps well you know i've run into to this throughout my career as people see something that looks like it's accessible and they think it is it's people don't understand and nobody very few people understand slopes and how that works so but they would if you put them in a chair and told them to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Wait, you're taking, it, I'll tell you, you're taking your life in, hand, in yep. your hands. If you go from Boltwood down to that entrance, yep. that is truly worse than a roller coaster. So, so but, while yeah. you have them there, can you also show them the uh, entrance that we discussed at the last meeting? Um, not the entrance, but the the north, the, the South Pleasant Street end and why it needs to have an accessible parking space there as well. Oh yeah, that's the east side of the, right. that's on the east side, yes, definitely. Yeah. That, cause yeah. that's in our minutes, but that doesn't mean that anyone's going to pay attention to it. No, that's actually what this meeting is about. Is no, I'm talking about the west side of the, common yes that's and you're talking that's really, about the east side no i'm i meant the west side the west side across from um the bank yeah across from the bank yeah okay and i went right. and looked at that and i think it'll work okay yeah okay because while you have them as a captive audience there are two issues there's one on the east side by town hall and there's one on the west side yes by the bank yeah um <clears throat> so that thank you so much for doing that and i'm glad that they're willing to go out there with you this is great yeah no i'm glad too okay. and then our other meeting is uh right. friday we have another announcement oh, oh hold on can i interrupt for just one second i'm going to yeah. go off camera because um well i missed it my phone was ringing i was going to check to see if that was saren trying to reach me uh, okay. but, uh, all right but uh, if I disappear, that's okay. the reason why. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a scheduled meeting between Marty, Pat, Pamela, and me with the town manager on Friday to discuss the situation with the accessible, um, uh, the accessible traffic signals. Um, and Elise, I don't know what you know um, about what we just Leak has left the meeting. Whoops, now she's gone. But anyway, okay, I'll just say it because it's in the it'll be in the recording. Um, there is a um, thirty thousand um, dollar. Oh come on, why can't I appropriation that is there for FY twenty three, which is right now, that can be used for. Uh, consultation for uh, purchase of equipment and for installation if it's needed. Or... Sarah has joined the meeting. Oh, there's Saren. Hello. Um, nope, she can't. Maybe she can hear me. She's but... muted right now. Okay. Okay. 
Well, Elise is still gone. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we Sarah. Well, I have been here from the beginning, but I wasn't admitted. So here oh. I am. Okay. Oh, no. But oh, I didn't miss anything. I heard everything you're talking okay. about. Okay. Good. Okay. So we're meeting on Friday with um, Paul to talk about the $30,000 appropriation for accessible um, signals in the um, traffic lights. And um, there is $30,000 there. And we want to make sure that he's on board with making sure that the expenditure is made, that the installation is made, that the town, um, the town council has been in full support of this. But at the last meeting, if you recall, we were told that there was uh, first no money, then we were told that there was $4,000. We were told that without money, Guilford doesn't do anything because he can't afford to do anything. We know that he has money. We know he's had it since July, and we know that it hasn't yet been expended. So I spoke with a man from Ocean State Signal, which is the company um, that is the New England uh, representative for this company called Polara that makes one of the companies that makes accessible signals. It's the it's the company that was in a video um, that I sent around. Did you get to watch it, Saren? I yes. couldn't watch it, but I read it. It's really remarkable, you know, and yeah. if they're going to come and look into that, that's wonderful. So that's the company that I spoke to the guy about. It's called Ocean State Signal in Rhode mm -hmm. Island. And we just, we wanna make sure that Paul um, is going to um, make sure that Guilford takes this seriously because thus far that has not happened. So that's the reason for the meeting. And that's Friday at noon. And I'm really glad that Pat and Pamela will be able to go to it. Um, and then we can get to the rest of the agenda which I unfortunately don't have my headphones. Can somebody read what's next on the agenda? Does anybody have it? Uh, joint Capital Planning Committee requests. Oh yeah. So is this, uh, does anybody have any idea? Well, we had talked about perhaps the uh, Mill River Park uh, working on, making sure that at least the pavilion and the trail to it, the pathway to it is accessible. And I have no idea what kind of an expense would be involved in that. And I don't know if that's a reasonable thing to ask for, for joint capital planning. Pamela, do you know anything about what other departments are planning to propose that has to do with, there's a $50,000 reserve every year to work on accessibility issues. I have not heard um, from other departments what their requests are, but I can inquire. Um, okay. Yeah. So I don't think the $50,000 is going to come close to taking care of the pavilion. Although, Marty, what do you think? I don't know. I think that'll get a designer and I think we need an analysis of what needs to be done up there in a phase plan for how to accomplish it. Okay. Which pavilion is this? I'm talking about the one at Mill River, the one that you brought to oh, our yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, because all these things are so expensive. I'm just trying to think of what we had in the back of our minds for $50,000 um, in the past. They've done a lot of small projects with it. They, they did, um, I think they purchased um, a loop or what do they call those? I don't know what they call them. I can't, my brain is shorting out. Um, oh, a hearing assistance? Yeah. yeah, they purchased that kind of a system for the bang center. They have one in town hall. Um, I don't know what the status of, we had discussed this when we talked to the North Amherst library people, they were not planning to put one in because they had said the capacity would be 49 people and for 50 people, you need to have one. And we said that um, we thought that that really wasn't gonna fly, but I don't know where the money for 
that would come to from at the North Amherst Library. And does anyone know about a status report? Alice Link has joined the meeting about the work at the North Amherst Library. They've got it closed in. Okay. I drive by it all the time. So okay. the the frames <laughs> up. They've got it closed in, and they're just working on the structure right now. Okay. So. <sighs> I don't think there was any money appropriated for the loop, um, for the hearing um, assistance for that. I think that was not in their plan. Um, you're back, Elise. I got disconnected for some reason, and I had to okay. figure out how to get back in. So I apologize. Oh, no problem. You don't. I've to... so I've missed a lot here. I'll just do oh, my we best. Just, we just talked about essentially what's going to happen Friday. There's a meeting with Paul. Um, okay. with um, Marty and me and P Pat and Pat uh, Pamela, too many names to start with P. Um, <laughs> Pat and Pamela, um, and we're gonna talk to Paul about the $30,000 appropriation for the accessible um, signals on the traffic lights. Good. Um, and so that's gonna happen. And I guess you heard the part that Marty talked about, right? No, I just got back in. I, I had to I read. When, She's meeting with um, Chris and Guilford on Thursday oh, morning to discuss right. the town hall and that entrance. Okay, that's as that. far as we got. And we're up to capital planning, trying to think okay. of what projects we might be interested in getting for, remember there's a $50,000 appropriation that, yes. that we have in the reserve, that capital planning each year has $50,000 to put toward accessibility topics. And hopefully we will be able to, um, hopefully, I mean, hope in the past, I guess different departments have proposals that they mm -hmm. want to spend that on. And then uh, we just make a comment on it. But Pamela yeah. hasn't heard about that yet. So maybe they didn't do it yet. Uh -huh. But if yes. but, but maybe um, next meeting Pamela can come to us with ideas. But we just talked about briefly the Mill River. Um, Marty thought perhaps that would get us a consultant to figure out what can be done about it. Good, Myra. Um, I have a question. Yeah, these fifty thousand dollars that are appropriated in the capital budget. Um, for accessibility issues, since it's peanuts as compared to the costs involved, could it be rolled over from one year to the other? Oh. Or, and if so, were there ever unspent funds from prior years that could be recouped with this 50,000? Well, money that doesn't get spent goes into reserve fund, right, Pamela? I mean, that, isn't that what happens to it? Yeah. So I believe that's correct. So is there any way you could find out how much uh, of this money in reserve funds were from unspent funds of the capital uh, uh, accessibility issues not properly spent or spent totally? Okay. I, yeah, I can find that out because Sean Mangano um, wrote to me about the thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So he's pretty he's pretty accessible. I can just ask him if there's any money left um, in the reserve fund that had been appropriated from ca joint capital planning. I have That's a feeling there isn't, but it would it's good to know if there is. Yeah, and also um, if we cannot spend the fifty thousand this year, could it be rolled over to next year? So that will make hundred thousand. So that might make an impact on that Mill River Pavilion, because if they close it, there is no alternative site. And that serves a big function, I think. Okay. All right, I can find out. And then Myra, there is, yeah. I'd like to recommend that we put together a list of priorities on okay. priority projects and use the $50,000 to start the planning for these projects, because everything we do is going to be more than that. Um, yeah. It's 
it's really tough to do it in fifty thousand dollar chunks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. It, what we need to do, I believe, is take our ideas, use the fifty thousand dollars to create an implementation plan. Like, I think we need to have a master plan for um, Mill River because that is such a massive project. And once you start working on it, you're gonna find that the pool, the pool building, I mean, all the pavements shot up there. I go up there all the time. And we need to, to push the town and the way to do that is to have a plan that you present and and then get the town to fund it. The other thing I'd like to hold some of I'd like to hold that money to if the thirty thousand dollars doesn't solve the right. uh, traffic lights, it will. I, that would be my first. Um, that would be my first place to put that fifty thousand if we need more than the thirty, which I suspect we probably will. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm sure we will. Yeah. So, um, I think okay. you know that's probably with you. that's probably a bad. We need to be the advocates for the town. We need to be the advocates for the disability community in the town to the town, and so that's what we need yeah. to. I think that's what we need to spend our money on. Um, also, um, they the federal government is putting massive amounts of money for infrastructure. Wouldn't these pedestrian signals fit under that? Why do they have to limit it to an accessibility budget the town uh, has for us? Oh, that we don't have to, we just have to apply for grants. I mean, the town would have to apply for grants for any projects that they wanna do for any of that federal government money. They don't just give it to you and. And you know, I think you have to apply for it. Uh -huh. um, so, who who if, then? How could we bring it to the attention of those grant writers? Because we don't do this ourselves. So I think maybe, we just have to talk about what it, what needs fixing, and then we need to prioritize. I mean, you know, there's an ongoing issue with sidewalks all over the place. Um, there's an ongoing issue with the accessible signals that we will not be able to do for $30,000. There is the Mill River project, and there are the hearing, um, there is making sure that when they open the North Amherst Library, that it, ha that it is set up for um, people to be able to use it for hearing uh, enhancement, whatever that, whatever system they choose. But um, they didn't plan to do that because oh, they didn't in that. No, remember it was, there was a private funder that we never, right. nobody ever was told about. Anonymous. And that yeah. person gave a certain amount of money or, you know, to do the building. And then we said that without the hearing loop, it wasn't complete. And somehow that got dropped, but we, we need to make sure that it is still going to be part of the project so mm -hmm. i don't know um i don't know who you need to talk to about that pamela the the assistive listening devices as part of the north Amherst library renovation um i don't know who's in charge of that even Is so i i i think i'll probably try to connect with uh pam and uh individuals on the second floor of planning and and um see if I can find out more information about the, that project. Okay. okay, I know it wasn't in the original scope, but mm -hmm. I agree with Marty that we ought to, we ought to ask them to put the $50,000 uh, in the joint capital planning toward fixing more or almost all of the accessible warning, um, the pedestrian, oh my God, I can't think, accessible pedestrian signals. Anyway, um, so one last sort of thought is right now is the time, Pamela, to get the wiring in for that loop or whatever the assisted 
uh, listening system is. And that needs to happen right, you know, as soon as possible. Because once they start closing in the walls, it's much more expensive and it doesn't look very pretty. Yeah. So if we're, I know why they didn't put it in because it's not required by code. It's not required because there's only 49 people. If there were 50, right. then it would be required. So, mm -hmm. and it wasn't, they're not being mean about this because 50 is a magic number in the building code. And it's a magic number for a lot of things. And it changes the types of systems and greatly increases the cost when you have more than 50 people. We have 50 or more. You have to have double doors on all the rooms. There's a whole bunch of things that are beyond. So they designed it to 49 for that reason, not because of the cost of the list of the assisted listing system. It's simply there's a whole myriad of additional costs once you get to 50 people. Um, I don't know whether people really understand that or not. I so, didn't. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Because we don't think about it, no. but it actually, when you go from on a, when you go from forty nine to fifty people, you go from a library occupancy to an assembly occupancy. An assembly is has a far more restrictive construction requirements. It's a whole different, whole different animal. So there's so a lot my, of reasons. Oh. So Marty, you're not really proposing to change the capacity from 49 to 50. No, over, no. But just stay there, but add the assisted living. Add the assisted right? I mean, living. Assisted the hearing thing. The listening, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we need to get that in. So um, Pamela, if you can find out who is running that project and we can get with them to talk about what kind of a system should be put in and get it in their plan it'll be a change order to the contract mm -hmm. but we need to at least have the infrastructure in there for the system mm -hmm. cool. so i will um make that ask uh, uh later today at least try to find out right. and um I'll, I'll and are you suggesting that you would like to have a special meeting um or what or do you want to hear from them at the next meeting um it doesn't really matter i yeah i don't have to be the one who meets with them but we just need to make sure that it's in the mm -hmm. that the infrastructure's there uh, okay. well i was asking would you like an up would you like the person who's leading the project to come to sure. a daac meeting oh, that'd be great that'd be yeah. nice that okay. would be nice right. okay Sure. Yes. We just, we just really want, we did discuss it. We did tell them that they, you know, that we wanted them to put it in. They said they didn't have to put it in. Um, and we sort of didn't, you know, I mean, we don't have any authority beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, but this, thank you, Marty, this is the time to put it in. It you know, is. And, and we didn't have a budget at that point either. No. When we talked to them, there was no um specific budget for accessibility no there wasn't any budget for anything because it was being privately funded yeah but i mean just overall in the town that's true yeah okay yeah so just so that i i'm clear i'm going to uh, to to determine who's leading that project and arrange for them to attend your next meeting to have a conversation about adding the assisted living hearing the theory, into, yeah. right into the yeah. project if yeah. that uh, isn't, but that might be too late well that's okay. what i'm i was don't think asked. it will be you okay. don't they've, think got, it will. they've got okay. they're not going to be sheetrocking next week okay uh -huh. they've okay. got a lot of work to do still okay, okay. we got a couple of months <laughs> all right Oh, okay fine okay because you said they were enclosing everything and i was well I they're enclosing on the outside, the outside. but they, ah, okay, that's got, got a a okay. lot of work. <laughs> okay. okay. And, and just uh, another point is that um, you do have two individuals in uh, as attendees for this well, meeting. Thank you for telling me. And, and we did okay. not 
we we sort of skipped over uh, public comment. Um, so I don't know if you want to hold that to the end or whether. Um, who are the? I can't see who's on there. I mean, I can't okay. listen to it because I don't have my earphone. Sure. So um, the attendees or uh, and excuse me, attendees, if I'm mispronouncing these names, uh, Raya Patel and Tracy Zaffin. Okay, uh, Tracy very kindly comes to many of our meetings. Um, and we, I mean, we finished, so we finished that agenda item because we talked about uh, the $50,000 for the joint capital planning. Um, actually, we, we didn't finish it. Are we going to prioritize that? Are we going to agree to prioritize that to go toward the accessible pedestrian signals? Marty suggested it. If needed, um, right? If needed. Marty, do you want to make a motion to the effect that you think that this joint capital planning 50,000 for FY24 should go toward additional funding for that? Um, that and for the listening system in the library. Okay. I would include that too. So make a motion okay. to request the joint um, capital planning committee to appropriate the $50,000 for the assisted listening in North Amherst Library and also any remaining funds to go towards the pedestrian signals. Is that correct? So you're you're prioritizing the assisted listening wiring. The, 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 it's I would pri prioritize that because that's the first thing out of the gate. And if we don't get it in now, then it'll be too late. Okay. Okay. All right. Does we do we have a second on the motion? I second it. Okay. Do we uh, have any more discussion on it? Hey, I would like to add uh, to uh, move part of this money to accessible pedestrian signals if needed. Oh, it's needed. It's yeah. needed. The $30,000 is not going to get us half of what we need. Oh, really? I yeah, because, no because it has to be, it's because it's involving the uh, the guy who has to come and study it from Ocean State Signal cost $2,000 for a day to tell us what can be done. Then the components have to be purchased. Then they have to be installed, which could be an in-house job, but might not be able to be an in-house job. And there are 13 signals that need some attention. I see. Okay, then you can just drop in that. <laughs> what okay. I wanted to discuss. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely be. I mean, okay. there won't be enough if we're going okay. to prioritize the North Amherst Library. But in fact, I think she's right. So I will vote for her motion. Um, are we ready to vote on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Please. Yes. Yes. Baron. Yes. You said yes. Uh, Marty. Yes. <laughs> and I am voting yes too. Okay. All right. So we have um, we have decided where we'd like the fifty thousand dollar appropriation. Now, can we go back to public comment? Um, do either of the visitors wish to make a comment? Yeah. Um, Anybody have a hand up? Yes, and I'm going to. Uh, promote uh, Tracy to panelists so she can comment. Oh, Thank good. You. Tracy Zafian has joined the meeting. Hi, okay. So Hi, Tracy. I'm Tracy and I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, and Myra had mentioned sometimes that when I email her, it ends up in a junk folder, so. I was trying I to reach out. Today. Okay, <laughs> actually, what's so interesting about that, Myra, is it said that you read it from Reykjavik. From what? <laughs> yeah, no, like, because I put, because I was afraid it would be in your junk folder, so I set this little flag, like, for it to send me back a message yeah, and, and I, open yes, it, and, and it I'm, said you were in Reykjavik. And I said, That's wow, cool. you know, I, I don't think there. you're in, I, but I was, I was like, maybe she's traveling. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and she's chairing the meeting even on her trip you know but anyway <laughs> well that's hilarious yeah uh i have no idea why um i've never so, been there actually i've never been there either it's pretty far <laughs> um pretty far. so i mean i just had some general updates you know that i could share but if you've gotten my emails by right, I don't need to. I mean, one was that the GOL is um, looking more at the snow and ice bylaw and that uh, they have a meeting tomorrow. And at their last meeting, they talked about um, expanding the bylaw to also include other obstructions of sidewalks, such as like bushes and branches and things. Um, which I think is a great idea. And Manager Henneke had offered to revise the language to incorporate those. Excellent. Um, so what's interesting to me, right, is that because Guilford has always said, well, it's town policy that people have to cut back the vegetation, but I couldn't actually, it's not in the bylaws currently. So there may be a policy out there. Perhaps it's like a carryover from the council or something, but I've I couldn't find it. So I think it would be good to codify it in the bylaw. Um, also, he's also mentioned at meetings, and I mentioned this to Mary Jo Henneke while she was revising, making a new draft, is that he's also said that the property owners are also responsible if there's like um, sand and salt and just debris in general on the sidewalks next to their property. Because I've mentioned that, for example, when I was working on safe routes to school and looking at kids biking on the sidewalk, say along Deltertown Road, and he said, well, the property owner is responsible, just like they're responsible for the, you know, the branches and everything. So again, I would like to see them maybe mention that in the bylaw as well. And I also did mention to her that I think it's really important not just to talk about sidewalks all the time, but also just to clarify that sidewalks also include the curb cuts like down at the intersections and at crosswalks and things. And maybe they just have a little definition in that section that sidewalks also include curb cuts and definitions or, I mean, or the crosswalks, but I just to, I mean, because otherwise, right, even if property owners are doing the, are shoveling, like people ignore the curb cuts all the time. And that's where the, it's often the worst. <laughs> If we actually had a real winter and we had snow. Um, she put all that language in her proposal? I put, she didn't put some of that in. And so I, Myra, when I emailed you today, I had CC'd you on what I had sent her. Okay, okay. Um, and I also asked just because um, Pat DeAngelis is now the chair of GOL. So uh -huh. I asked that Mandy or Pat um, send you like the latest version. Okay, okay. Um, so I and then, and then the, you're going to want anything that we wouldn't approve of. And then the other thing, of course, is like street lights. Is I mean, um, we're not allowed to discuss that at this meeting. No, no, no. Of course, right. Of yeah. course, I just wanted so to say that, comment, like, it had come up right as a public comment, just to say yeah. that um, TSO finally, and you know, this proposal has been floating around for like six months, but I'm glad that they are finally asking for TAC and DAC input. So. So we're going to discuss the streetlight proposal at the next meeting because um, they, the information that I got came in right after Pamela had posted the agenda and was the next morning. And it was too late to amend what she posted. So we couldn't discuss it. So I wrote to Mandy, I guess. I wrote to Mandy and I asked her if it would be too late for us to put it on our March 14 agenda. And she said that it in fact would not be too late because she couldn't imagine that things would be getting done until later in March. So, right. so yeah, so she's probably going to come to the TAC meeting, I think on March 9th, because um, so, so we'll be talking to her more then. And um, just one, just one note is that one big, there's two main parts of their proposal. One has to do with uh, lighting fixtures and having more screened lighting and things to reduce light pollution but then there's also the second part about where street lights are located and where they are removed and that second piece which is one that i was most concerned about for safety and accessibility is on hold for now so they're not really pursuing that at this time oh they're not um, but there is still some language related to that in the main part 
in the part that they are doing. So I flagged that language and um, and okay. tackle send them comments. And I'm happy to CC you, Myra, when I do that. Okay. So you see what Thank we say. But. Um, I didn't realize that they had taken that off the table. The thing I read seemed to think that they were still going to be considering it. Well, yeah, the language is a little bit ambiguous. It says this is for future discussion, but what I was told is it's on hold for now. So okay. I mean, the part that really impacts this committee has to do with the location. Oh, absolutely. And whether they're on or off. And we had a meeting, but I don't know. I don't remember whether we took a vote. That would have been in December. We don't have any record of it. And I don't remember whether we took a vote on not turning off streetlights. So at the next meeting, when we discuss it, we'll take a vote. And okay. whether, it, you know, I, whether they're going to do it or not. I mean, you know, they're doing things on their own track. So. And it's really good that Pat's on GOL and that she and she's now to the chair. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Anyway, with us. So those are my comments. But Great. Um, thank you. Thanks. All right. I Take appreciate care. it. And uh, does the other visitor have, care to make a comment? No. Yes. The other visitor does not have a hand raised. Okay, all right. So we can go back to our agenda. Um, where were we? Because I don't have my headphone working. I you need to tell me where we are. So, so the next thing that I have listed is the March meeting with Jeff uh, Dugan from uh, oh, yeah. Mass Office of Disability. He, um, when I wrote to him about being a commission, he had offered to come out and tell us what kind of services the Mass um, Office on Disability could provide to us um, and to talk to us in general about, you know, um, the the whole, it would, I just thought it would be nice to have uh, some kind of connection with the Mass Office on Disability. He seemed to think we were doing all the things that made us a commission, that made us a commission. Um, and he sent, uh, information about, no, I guess I had the information already from the website about what we would need to do to become one. Um, so I, I thought it would be useful for him to come and just make a presentation and answer a couple questions. Do uh, people think that's a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, I why not? A good idea. Okay. He's, he's willing to do it, you know? Okay. So I think he, um, I tentatively asked him to reserve a time at the next meeting. So that's good and we can do that and stop lights. Yeah. Um, okay, and then- Myra, also in the next meeting, is there any way you can add an agenda item, new members for the AAC? Yeah, I'm I gonna bring that up applicants. before on Friday. What's that? I, that's my plan before we launch into the $30,000 is to ask him in the presence of Pat and Pamela to please provide us with opportunities for new membership because it's been now 18 months since we were down one and six months since we were down two. And that's not good. Yeah. So I that I planned that to be the beginning of my speech. Um, and, and, I, and it was also in comments that I wrote. Um, okay. And also there is one applicant I you all know the retired executive director of Stavros. He just said, you know, I haven't heard anything, have you? So he's very no, knowledgeable, haven't. but I have no idea. All right, I, so I'm gonna uh, interrupt just to say, I will check into the current application um, from the Stavros gentleman. And um, I'll also take this time to say that three of you have uh, terms that are scheduled to expire <laughs> on June 30th of this year. So membership is definitely uh, needed. And I, I think there has been a history in the past of uh, seeking uh, a, an extension of your terms. Um, so that, uh, that might also be a possibility, but uh, Saren, uh, Tori, and Marty, you, um, I was informed that your terms are scheduled to expire on June 30th. So um, we'll keep that in mind as you're thinking about renewing your 
your terms and, and seeking additional membership. So that's in addition to the two that yes. are vacant. Yeah. Holy moly. Pamela, <laughs> Pamela, I definitely want to continue on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How about you, Sarah? And do you, do you want to, or do you not? Have you had enough? <laughs> no, I can continue. Mm -hmm. But if there is somebody, uh, a star waiting to be admitted, I can give my, give my place to them too. Okay. And I don't know what Tori's plan is. So we have to find out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Um, what, oh, is, are we up to the Northampton? Uh, senior center oh, accessible yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. um, does anybody know what's happening with that accessible van they have it now and i believe they hired somebody to drive it is that right so um, I'll, I'll have to say that i meant to ask uh haley yesterday when i was over there for another event and it totally slipped slipped my mind but i can follow up with her and uh uh, provide the commission with uh, uh, an update. And maybe okay. uh, is there any way you can also follow up and ask her how do people put their na names if they would like to have a ride mm -hmm. and what right. is their schedule, what is their priorities like medical first or and what is their area of service? Like if somebody has an appointment in a nearby town, say in Springfield, mm -hmm. will they limit it to a radius of certain miles? You know, right. it would be nice we, if we can be made aware of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we, um, I confess to not having looked it up. Um, I, yeah, all of those are the right questions. Like for, are there priorities? Uh, the ADA van services that work for the regional paratransits are not allowed to prioritize trips, but this isn't that. And so I think they can make whatever regulations they want to make. And it, you know, we just need to, it would be good if we all knew. And is it for only people who are over 60 or is it for people in the town who have disabilities, even if they're under 60? So we don't know any of that. Um, and I guess, I mean, we could, yeah. So it would be good if we could find all that out and I will find it out and Pamela will find, I'll look through the materials that is, that are written. And if you can talk to Haley or even, um, ask her if she can come and talk to us for 10 minutes. That yeah. Would, mm -hmm. that's sure. Great. So know who the makes these decisions who uh, sets up the criteria? Probably that's the council on aging, right? I don't, I have no idea. I don't know either. So maybe it might be helpful if Haley comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. sure. I will uh, uh, work with Myra to develop a schedule so that I can we'll get the um, right hey, time for the right, other right, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. And then um, we got this, the Pamela got a notification from or an invitation from Northampton Commission um, that they would like to show the film Crip Camp, which I guess was nominated for some Academy Awards, didn't get them, but, um, and it's a story of this camp, summer camp for kids, kids and young adults with disabilities um, and how people developed into activists from that camp I think it's it's based on this woman, Judy Human. And if you have a few hours to read a pretty amazing book, she wrote a book, it's not a long book, called Being Human, H-E-U-M-A-N, which is how you spell her name. And she was uh she grew up in Brooklyn and she had polio at 18 months and needed to use a wheelchair, could not walk. And it's her story about how she was treated as a non-person in New York City, which had some of the best public schools in the United States of America at the time. Oh. Um, 
she wasn't even allowed to attend one of the schools until she was nine. Then she was told she had to go in a special class. They put her in fourth grade, but there were 17 year olds in the fourth grade as well. Um, oh. So it was really, this was the storage in the basement for people with disabilities and the disabilities were anything, um, but her disability was that she couldn't walk. And she knew from a young age that she was a fire hazard. That's what she was told, which was why she couldn't go to school. And the, the story that she tells is pretty amazing. She did finally go to a, uh, what I guess they, they would have called, it's prior to the word mainstreaming, um, public high school, not the one near her house, but one that she was allowed to go to in Brooklyn. And she went to Long Island University lived in a dorm, had people helping her out, blah, 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 applied for a teaching license in New York City because she had an education degree and was denied the license because um, they didn't want her, anybody in a wheelchair to be able to teach school because that was, how would they handle her in a fire hazard and how would she do this and how would she do that? So she had a friend who had a friend who wrote for the New York Times and they put a letter in the Times and then all hell broke loose against the New York City public schools um, based on the letter in the New York Times. And so she ultimately got her teaching license, but did not get a teaching job. Anyway, so she became an incredible advocate. Um, she is responsible for the fact that we have 504. Um, she, there were regulations that had been promul not had had not been promulgated, and Jimmy Carter's secretary. No, it wasn't Jimmy Carter's. It would have been, I don't know, it must have been Nixon's. Anyway, whoever the Secretary of Education wasn't um, wasn't going to promulgate them. And basically, they um, there was a huge demonstration. There were huge demonstrations in various cities um, that to get the attention of Congress and of the world, I think they ended up crawling up the steps of the Capitol because they couldn't get in any other way. And they got a lot of coverage. Does anybody remember this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this was all her. Um, she set this all in motion. Um, and it's really pretty amazing. So that's what the movie, the movie is about a camp that she went to that inspired her to defy everybody else and say, you know what, I really am a person and I really should be treated like one. Um, which is just, it's, this is in the 1960s. She was denied school in the 50s. I mean, she didn't even get a separate school. She got nothing. She got Wait. two hours, two hours of tutoring at home every week. Something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. Till she was nine. Um, anyway, so um the we were invited to go watch this movie in Northampton and then to talk to them about how we can work together for issues we have in common. And I think it's a great idea, but then there's the thing at the end, did anybody read it about the open meeting law and how we'd need to talk to people because how do we have a meeting there with them? Did, did you think about this, Pamela? I didn't. I don't yes. know what to do. So I, I think the point of the last paragraph is that if a quorum of this group is going to be present there, then we need to post the meeting to comply with the open meeting law. But oh, I, uh, I, th I think that's just the just the gist of it. But I can I can check with our resident expert, um, Athena, but I, I think it's just that um, in order to comply with the open meeting law, we have to post the meeting and an agenda. And I, I think that that's all possible. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's the day that we would normally meet in July anyway, but it's not at the same time. And it's in Northampton. We'd have to arrange uh, transportation. And I don't know if anyone is interested in going. So I put it on the agenda. Uh, is there any way there could be a Zoom link or is it only in person? Mm. Uh, well, okay. it's okay. about the movie. So I don't think there's a Zoom link. Right. Although I suppose uh, you could because if you advance. put the movie and the meeting time, we're talking of about three hours. So I was also going to suggest that is there any way we can watch the movie and then participate on the open discussion part? Hmm. To say, I think you can watch it on your own because it's definitely yeah. yes. you can get on Netflix and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen it on Netflix. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
and then uh, join the discussion part. So I can ask the, or we can, uh, um, can certainly ask the organizers in Northampton right. if they might be willing to do that, but I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't have any I answer don't for either. that. Too. I mean, I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to see if they can provide that. Mm -hmm. And also on Zoom, so there could be a bigger audience. So we can, I can certainly um, ask and um, and report back what their response is, but. That would be wonderful. It, That's yeah. great. They want an RSVP by April 7th or something. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a little bit of time, um, but even if, if some people go on Zoom and some people go in person, we would still have the same um, open meeting law constraint. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, is anybody interested actually in going over there or would we all want to do it on Zoom? I might be able to go over there. I might be able to go over there too. Yeah. Depending I, I on like transportation, it. same here too. Right. Where is well, this being shown? Yeah, I can actually. Northampton Senior Center. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I can get there, but a lot of other people might not be able to. So, you would get there by bus. I would get there by bus and walk. I used to um, take tap dancing classes over there, so I could get there. Uh -huh. but, yeah, provided it's not pouring rain. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I would need to take a van or if Marty would be willing to drive some of us over there. That of course I'd be willing to drive. Okay. All right. Well, or thank you. And also there van. is, then, and you can get a van, uh, Sarah. And yeah. like, if we don't have to have a million vans going over there, there would actually be a chance that you'd get there. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the senior <laughs> van. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah that's a, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was I just thinking that perhaps that would be a good use for the senior uh, van. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I just looked up on the website and I can't find anything about that van. I never heard of it. I've what actually seen it. I've, I parked next to it the other day, but yeah, th I can't find anything on their website. That's just mm -hmm. a segue. Sorry. Why did I just read? There was some expenditure. You know, I get all those announcements from the town and there was yeah. something about thirty six, forty six thousand dollars for a new employee for the Council on Aging, I think it had to do with driving the van. That I didn't see, Maybe but I know like a lot, given what that the they got a relatively in good shape van donated from PVTA. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's really a nice van. Good. So you see nothing about how to reserve it? Nope, I <laughs> can't find anything. And it may be that the driver's not on board yet. It might be. Okay. Well, it's then not it's even in the newsletters. Perfect for us to have Haley come and talk to us <laughs> right. about how the van yeah. is going to be deployed. But actually, um, that would be a perfect use of it to take mm -hmm. people to that meeting uh, and, and film. I think it would be a really good idea for us to have some kinds of... Um, you know, we, we really ought to be talking to them because we're separated by seven miles, but we're really one community and That's we have right. the same needs. Now, I know that they have a pilot PVTA project in Northampton, not here, but in Northampton for same day service. So if you find yourself in Northampton and you wanna take a van from some place in Northampton to another place in Northampton, you can give them two hours notice and get a same day van pickup. Wow. wow. Supposedly. Wow. But, and, and it will serve people who don't live in Northampton as long as you are in Northampton. Good to know. Hmm. Yeah. So if you go over there and you want to go somewhere else there, the the theory is that you should be able to call with two hours notice and get a van pickup. That could be very useful. Well, it could be if we were in Northampton. Yeah. No, <laughs> I know. No, and they have it in Westfield too. They yeah. did not offer it in Amherst. It's a pilot, and hopefully, it will get here as not a pilot. 
So it might be a good idea for us to work together with them. So maybe when they work on pilot projects, we can just expand the horizon. That would you be know, cool. maybe we can expand the horizon to five college serving in the area. Yeah. Because. I assume they invited Hadley people too. Did you see who they invited? I, I did not see an inv invitation uh, list, but our in but I would assume that they invited South Hadley as well. Okay. Well, that, what a great thing mm -hmm. to have. It's a nice thing that they're going to do it. I, right. I I think it would be yeah. really good if we could participate. That would be so good. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the pilot? That's yeah. what you're yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that is existing. That is not planned. You could do that now if you want. See, we need to get uh, more members into our group. Mm -hmm. We do. You know, mm -hmm. to get more actively involved. Otherwise, you know, uh, some of us, you know, when we can participate, there are not even the whole seven of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope we can get some people. I, I just can't understand the reason, the reasons for the lack of action on this. It's been 18 months since Xander resigned. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I'll just share with you my experience with the Human Rights Commission, which was also a commission that needed uh, additional memberships. And we were able, but, well, I think Two people self-identified that they were interested and one person I had a conversation with. So they just recently swore in three new members for, for the Human Rights Commission. Um, if there are individuals that you're aware of that um, you, know, you could talk to, I know that there are the possibility of some students who might be interested. Um, the HR, the Human Rights Commission has one college uh, student um, that's a member. Um, and then perhaps other individuals that you can think of that I could reach out to or that you have reached out to that might be encouraged to join. Well, no, first we can we, find out if there are any applications because yeah, Saren, says I will. There, Saren says there are. Yeah, um, I will definitely find that out. Um, um, and also maybe if uh, we're reaching out to the students, we could, I'm sure each university have a um, disability committee or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, we can contact through them. So that might be interesting. Right. So yeah, I, um, each of the colleges does have a disability director. Um, yeah to work with students. And so certainly at Hampshire and Amherst and UMass, That's right. we, we yeah, colleges. right, we could, yeah. could seek students from those areas. Right. Would they stick around? I mean, you know, no, they won't. <laughs> well, no. you know, so it actually, I think it depends on, um, on the students. So you might find a an undergraduate who's very passionate about this this sure. area um, and who would work during the time that they were here, two to three years. Um, when I worked for Smith College, the disability director and I uh, worked a lot with the student population and I, um, the students were fantastic. Like I've just, I've kept in touch with a few students and they've gone on to do just wonderful things. So you might get someone who's really passionate. Um, and then you okay. might also find a graduate student. So it doesn't, you know, we think student and we sort of think traditional age, but there are students of all ages at um, at the at the institutions. And so, it, it, you know, you might, find someone who's from the area who's a non-traditional student who might be passionate and yeah. want to contribute. One That's of the problems true. we have is our meeting time. Um, right. So but, I don't yeah. know how flexible that is with people, but yeah. it, is, it is a tough time for people who work. Uh, right. Or you know, class. Originally it was be, we can maybe reschedule our meeting times too to accommodate. Right. You know, so there we were lots of Stavros people when I joined the committee. It was you, and you know, like there were a number of people who worked at Stavros, Joe, yes. and you know, three of the seven worked at Stavros, and other people were retired. So, you know, it was easy to have the meeting at Stavros during their lunch hour, and you know, it worked out. But right now, there isn't anyone except Tori who works at Stavros. 
So um, it's okay. just different. And maybe we can move the time. Mm -hmm. Sure. How do people feel about that? Because let's leave it like this until there's somebody new. They can only do it at this time. And then we we'll look into that. How does that sound? Sounds good. Sounds and we are Sounds also good. allowed to keep this uh, meeting on Zoom horizon for a while. So that's actually very helpful. Those of us that need special transportation. Yep. yep. Yes. Okay. Um, Is that? That's everybody? your agenda with yeah. uh, um, old yeah. business or other business on uh, approval of the minutes are the remaining things. Does anybody have any other things that we should talk about that weren't discussed? I think we're covered. Oh. Okay, so from here, we're going to have Haley and Jeff Dugan the next, at the next meeting. We're also going to discuss the streetlights, but it's going to be less of a big deal than it would have been because I guess from what Tracy said, the lights, uh, whether to turn them off is not an active consideration right now. Um, also, tomorrow, are we going to have somebody from the library um project to join oh, right. our meeting mm -hmm. or are you going to meet with that person individually about this accessible uh listen right. to the next month because we well, do have that library and we do have what do you well, think so i if i could offer in i so i doubt if you're going to need more than 15 minutes for haley she's probably 15, 20 minutes, I can't imagine that you're going to have a large, long discussion about the van. So you might be able to um, to have the three presenters that would give them each a half an hour, uh, more or less for. OK, if Haley just I mean, she could just write something up too. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. she could just send us something in writing that says, we have the van, we don't have a driver, we do have a driver, these are the rules that are being considered. And I guess what we wanna know is it, is it in for Amherst within the town only? Is it for uh, senior citizens to get to go to Greenfield or Springfield for medical appointments? Is it uh, just for people over 60 or is it people with disabilities as well um, who are younger or is it, um, I guess the other question somebody well, asked. Which services they provide. Yeah, prioritizing right. services. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. how much in advance do people need to reserve? And you know, so I guess, I mean, if she doesn't want to come, those are the questions. And if she needs, if the rules are not uh, finalized yet, and if she wants some um, input from us, you know, mm -hmm. we can also, so as part of that group. Right, then we should definitely be involved if she wants input. All right. um, that would be great. Well, of I can definitely- love to give her input, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I can uh, definitely uh, reach out to Haley and get that information. Um, I'm yeah. sure I, she probably will be able to answer some of those questions very quickly. So I might be able to respond to the group um, this week, if not, I'll I'll ask her to provide me with a write up, and I can get that out to you early next week. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Hey. All right, and um, so we will have more. Oh yeah, we'll have to put on the results of our conversation with Paul. Mm -hmm. um, to um, so maybe I should move Jeff Dugan to the next month because okay. we have we have some follow ups to discuss. So I'll see if he can come. April fourteenth, April eleven, it would be right. Yeah. March 14. Yeah, no, April yeah. 11. Yeah. Okay, maybe I can move him to that one. All right. So if we don't have anything else, I think we need a motion to adjourn. Well, oh, what, wait, there is one thing. Uh, tomorrow, oh. the GOL meeting, the one that Tracy talked about, which I don't even know what GOL stands for, government something or other and legislation. Um, they are having their meeting and that's when they're talking about the snow and ice removal bylaw 
And if oh. anybody has a few minutes, that's what Tracy just told us. If anybody has a few minutes to go to that meeting, um, I uh, we don't have that on our agenda. I think we took a vote about that at some point. But I think so. I don't even know. Um, but if anybody would like to go to that meeting and just make sure, I mean, you know, sort of, I wish I knew if we had taken a vote on it. What time is that meeting? 9.30. In the morning. Yeah, and I can send you, I think Tracy just sent me the link this morning yeah. to the meeting. Um, but if you want to go to it, I unfortunately cannot go to most of it because I have a medical appointment. Um, yeah, I might because that's an important, that's important. Right. I mean, I think Tracy has really covered it yeah. very well, um, but I think it would be important. Um, that's why I wish I knew if we had taken a vote on this. Oh. I know we talked about it. I remember and, talking oh, about it, but I don't We've been remember. talking about it for years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, you know, we have, everything that Tracy said, we have talked about. So oh, yeah. I don't know whether there's a formal vote. I might just send a note to Pat and tell her that we've been discussing this for years. She might mm -hmm. even have been present for some of it that, uh, and I can, I'll read what Tracy said, but it, you know, I, I'm, I can't say that we've taken a formal vote on it, but I'm sure we would if we had had the opportunity to today, which we don't because it wasn't on our agenda. Okay. All right. All right, and I need a motion to adjourn. So one, before you adjourn, oh, okay. um, um, we don't have to do it at this meeting, but we do need to uh, approval of the minutes. Oh, I don't know if God, everybody, if, if yeah. every, and yeah. Um, yeah, please provide me with feedback on the, I tried to very hard to follow Maureen's um, uh, format. format. Thank you very much, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so. Funny. It was very nicely done. Mm -hmm. I read it and I said, wow, this is long. How many three pages of something? <laughs> yeah, so. And uh, it, I couldn't find anything to change. Even my name was spelled perfectly correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I move that we approve it. Everybody gets a chance to look at it. A second. Okay, Marty. Approve. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Lise. Yes. Sarah. Yes. And I will approve them too. So now we have minutes. All right. Thank also, you. the way you presented Pam is really nice. You know, all oh. in this packet. You know, and I looked there. Agenda was there. How to zoom in there, and everything was there. So it was super nice. Thank well, you. I, thank you. I'm I'm getting it better. <laughs> Yes. It's oh, good. yeah. It's perfect. It's Very really. Good. You hard. have to teach us too. <laughs> it's really hard. I yeah. always admire people who can do that. I cannot do that. Okay. Um, all right. Motion to adjourn. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> I finally asked for something at the right time. <laughs> okay. Anybody want make a motion? Second. I'm. I motion to adjourn. I'm. A, okay. I'll second. I can't make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> you can't. What happens if we say no? Are they gone? We want to continue. <laughs> oh, what a cute dog. Thank oh. you. That's my guide dog Tuesday. Oh, how sweet. It's just like my grand dog. Uh, the yellow lab. I oh, happen to be can. sitting on the floor, so she's coming oh, around. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. You disappeared, but now I put my earphone in and you came back. <laughs> so weird. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Okay. Um, did anybody make a motion to adjourn? I never heard. I did. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought I, I did. I just, no. Yes, you, you did. You probably okay. did. You just, everybody <laughs> disappeared. Okay. All right. All right. So we need a second and a vote. Who's the second? A second. The... Okay. And Marty. Adjourn. And Elise. Adjourn. Okay. Elise. Yes. Adjourn. Okay. Saren. Yes. And me too. <laughs> Take so, care. Oh, all right. Thank you. And also, Pamela, are you still there? Yes, I am. Did mm -hmm. we just decide to move uh, Dugan to April? Yes. Yes, did, you right? did. Yes. Okay. I will write to him right now. Okay.
Okay, all right. see you Friday, okay. Maya. All right, all right. Bye. I'll see you on Friday. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. All right, great. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.